Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, what a day. <laughs> we got some really interesting reports to talk about. Uh, so, PlayStation's new game just came out, Concord. I don't know if any of you all actually remember that it was going to release today, but it did. And we've got the numbers, which is... Well, it's something, all right. So we're going to talk about just how big of a flop this game actually is. And then we're also going to talk about Avowed once again, because a new report came out about that and its frame rate. But I'm going to tell you right now that the reports going around are maybe jumping the gun a little bit and are frankly wrong in how they're wording things. So we are going to talk about both of those situations today. Fun times ahead. Uh, but let's just go and get right to our first topic of the day, starting with Wukong. And the reason I want to start off with this game is because I, I, I think it's just... Such a fascinating, albeit a frustrating situation. And what I mean by that is there is this conversation around this game that quite frankly has nothing to do with the game, has nothing to do with the quality, or how good it is. No, 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 no. We're not allowed to enjoy games anymore. That's, that's apparently a taboo. And in the case of Wukong, there's a certain group of people out there that views anybody who likes this game as a bad person, because the studio that developed it didn't conform to their line of thinking or their ideology. Now, if you've been paying attention this past year, you might know some of the hit pieces that's gone around this game to kind of, you know, hurt this studio, which, by the way, those claims have already been debunked, but we're going to ignore that for right now. But it's been very interesting this past week, because we know all too well that Wukong has been lighting up the charts over on Steam. And even more so... We just got a confirmation that it's already sold more than 10 million copies worldwide. That is absolutely insane. I mean, it's quickly becoming one of the most successful games this generation. And yes, the majority of that comes from China, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I don't know why people are even acting like that's some kind of problem. I don't know, man. People are insane to me. But, but it's also doing very well in the West, because quite frankly, <laughs> it's just a good game. And again... You would think that people would be happy about this, that we got a good game that's selling well. You would think there would be some kind of joy. But no, instead, that's not allowed. Instead, we have to be miserable, I guess. There are certain people out there that are mad about this situation. You can actually see some of that on this website here. And you can just kind of smell the disdain from the person who wrote this. Because they wrote... Black Myth Wukong's shameless lack of diversity is attracting the wrong type of fans. I mean, are we really going to do this? We're really going to devolve into another petty debate because something doesn't match your idealistic views. Now, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain this to people like they're toddlers. But you know what? Here we are. And I feel like it needs to be said. Wukong was developed by a Chinese studio and is based on a popular Chinese novel from the 16th century about a monkey man. I mean, are we honestly expecting a lot of diversity in a game like this? Like, honestly. Because if you were, I think you might be the problem here. Not everybody else, but you. See, the thing is, is that diversity is fine. There's nothing wrong with diversity in specific. But just like everything else in life... There is a time, and there is a place. And in this case, Wukong is an established story based on Chinese culture. Now, if this was an American developer, yeah, sure, there might be some changes. It might not have been as successful, probably not anywhere close for that matter, but in this case, this is created by a Chinese developer. They have a lot of passion for what they're doing, and there's zero reason for them to change a beloved story based on their own culture or to change characters for the sake of meeting a forced quota. That does absolutely nothing for the quality, and instead, what that really does is it alienates the original fans and it takes people out of the experience because it doesn't match the setting or its history. Like, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain that. You know, if a game's set in Japan, I expect a bunch of Japanese people. If a game is set in China, I expect a bunch of Chinese people. If a game's set in Africa, I expect a bunch of African people. In the case of Wukong, I expect monkey people. Yet this debate here keeps popping up in places where it really shouldn't be. What I want to say here, though, because let's ignore all of the 
the ridiculous controversy. What I want to say here is congratulations to Game Science for the success that they've had in Wukong. It's well-deserved. They made a good game, which is what we should be talking about. And I want to celebrate the fact that a big AAA game from a place that we don't usually see games like this from is seeing worldwide success. Big congrats to you all, and I hope this is just the first of many, many more to come. Big congrats to you. Now let's go talk about something else, though, and uh, this might come as some surprise, uh, but Striking Distance Studios already has a new game plan for October 31st. Now, if you don't know who they are, this is the studio behind Callisto Protocol, and they've been working on a roguelike spinoff by the name of Redacted. Not exactly sure about that name, but nonetheless, you can see its gameplay here, and it kind of reminds me of Hades to a degree, but with its own spin and a comic book art style. Of course, being a Callisto Protocol game, you'll fight off infected inmates in a prison as you escape by any means necessary. Now, the way they're describing it, it does, however, sound like this is going to be a very difficult game. They said Redacted is about fighting, dying, dying again, dying some more, and adapting, taking a classic roguelike formula, and cranking it to 11. So, I'd say the way that reads, I definitely expect a pretty tough challenge. But if you're interested, again, it will be out on October 31st. Okay, now let's go and talk about Concord here for a moment, because this game quietly launched today. And I mean very quietly, because I think a lot of people actually forgot it was releasing today. I, I, I was paying attention to this, because uh, th this game is so fascinating in the sense that apparently it's a game that's been in development for eight years, you know, Sony invested a lot of money into their live service projects. They went out and acquired this studio because that's how much confidence they had in this game. And, you know, what makes it even more interesting is that Bungie, you know, they also acquired Bungie for, what, two plus billion dollars, whatever it was, I can't even remember right now. But they, they acquired Bungie. And they gave Bungie control over all of these live service projects. So Bungie goes to this studio and that studio and they're like, hey, we don't like this game, it's canceled. We're going to go over to Naughty Dog, hey, we don't like your live service project, canceled. They went and checked out the new Twisted Metal game, they're like, hey, that doesn't look good, canceled. They went over and checked out the Insomniac live service game about Spider-Man, I guess, and they're like, nah, that doesn't look good, we're going to cancel it. But somehow they went over to this game here, Concord, and they're like, yeah, this is the stuff that we're looking for. I want you to keep that in mind. Because, check this out. Concord launched earlier today. Actually, just six hours from the recording of this video. Now, typically when you have a new game launch, there's going to be an immediate surge of players. Now, that's especially needed when it comes to a live service project, because you completely rely on having a big community. Well, over on Steam Database, you can see that so far, its peak high is just 697 players. Even more so is that if you look over on Metacritic, so far, and this is just with five reviews, it could change a lot from you know now to next week. We'll, we'll see what happens, but right now, Concord has a 69 overall score on Metacritic. And when you combine the two different things here, the low player count and, and the low scores that it's currently receiving... I mean, it just doesn't look like a good situation. And you have to wonder why Sony had all of this confidence in this game specifically. They went out and acquired this studio because that's how much confidence they had in this game. They went out and made a limited edition controller because they thought this game was going to be a smashing hit. That's what they thought. Bungie saw this game. And they said, hey, this game looks awesome. It gets the green light. All the rest of them, they're canceled, but this one gets the green light. So Sony thought it was going to be a smashing success. Bungie thought it was going to be a big-time hit. Yeah, here we are. How could they have gotten this so wrong? And it's something that I have said for years. Sony has no idea what they're doing when it comes to live service games. Historically, they have really struggled when it comes to multiplayer. Now, every once in a while, they'll have some mild success, like with... Killzone. I absolutely love Killzone on the PlayStation 3. They also have Gran Turismo. That game has some success when it comes to its multiplayer. But for the most part, Sony has struggled when it comes to multiplayer games. They just don't know what they're doing with this type of stuff. And, and that's why I've been critical of their decision to go away from their single-player games. And, and this is directed specifically at Jim Ryan. Thankfully, he's retired. Hopefully, Sony's new leaders are not going to go in this direction. But with Jim Ryan... He believed in live service so much that he decided 
Well, I'm going to increase our budget for live service games and the sacrifice of our single player output. If you want to blame anybody for the slow year that PlayStation is having right now, you can look at Jim Ryan for making that decision. If he would have invested more in single player games as he should have, who knows what would have released this year. Instead, you get games like Concord. Now, thankfully, we have Astrobot in a couple weeks because that game looks awesome. But yeah, Concord has not looked good for a long time, and, and there's various reasons why this game is not having success. One, it's a $40 game in a crowded market. You know, there's a lot of other hero shooters which are free to play, whereas this one's $40. Already not a good decision. And another thing, you're making a hero shooter. How about making some characters that people actually like? That's one of the big reasons that Overwatch has had as much success as it's had. It's also not a unique game. From what I've heard, it's not a particularly bad game. It's just, it doesn't stand out in any shape or form. It's just a very generic game and a crowded market, and, and that's not what you want to see. So, you know, this was just a bad decision from Sony all around. I mean, I, I'm just amazed at how this game made it as far as it did. I'm amazed how Sony acquired the studio. But here we are, and I, I think the results are not surprising, even in the slightest. Now, one last thing before we go, I want to talk about a report that's been going around today that's been absolutely blowing up, and I feel like this report has been misleading at best. Now, what's happening here is that an Obsidian developer on a podcast mentioned that the baseline target for Avowed is 30 frames per second. And it seems like every single outlet in the world, every single Twitter account just ran with this as some kind of confirmation that Avowed will be 30 FPS and nothing more. When that's not actually what was said. Now, if you actually look at the real quote, because we're going to read it here, you're going to see what I'm talking about. What this person actually said is that performance is one of the last things that we figure out, right? Our core target is 30 frames per second, bare minimum. That's the expectation. It's a first-person single-player game. You don't necessarily need that 60 frames, and that allows us to get a lot juicier with the effects, lighting, and all this other stuff. It's a trade-off we opted to make relatively early, and we're really happy with that. I mean, the game is running pretty smooth for how visually dense it is, and that was always our goal. As far as a greater understanding of performance spec, we're still figuring all that out. It's one of the last things that you do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read that last part again. That way we can just completely visualize what he's saying. He said, it's one of the last things that you do. In multiple parts of this quote, he indicates that they will work on performance later on. He suggested that multiple times. Yet, all of these outlets, all of these Twitter accounts, they ran with this story as some kind of confirmation that it will be 30 frames and nothing more. This is the problem that I think people have with reporting. You, you have all of these journalists, you have all of these Twitter accounts, and all they're looking for is clicks. They want as many clicks as they can, and a lot of times negativity drives that. Accuracy for these accounts are not the most important thing. And, and let me be clear about something. I'm not saying that Avowed will have a 60 FPS performance mode. I don't currently know that one way or the other. All I'm saying is that this statement here doesn't confirm that it will only be 30 FPS. And in reality, what this person actually did is say, you know, we have this working at 30 FPS right now, that's been our target all along, but later on we will look at performance and we'll scale things back and see what happens from there. If anything else, we could kind of view this as maybe the real reason that they delayed Avowed. I mean, it is possible, but yeah, there there is definitely no confirmation with this specific statement. I think everybody needs to just kind of cool off and see what happens from here. But I will be very interested to see if Microsoft or Obsidian comes out and clarifies what they meant by that. Because this has definitely been a very negative story that's been blowing up online today. So we'll see if they come out and maybe dispel this a little bit or if they just kind of let people run with it until they can confirm one way or the other if they will have a 60 FPS mode. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. Today was a little bit different. There was no scripting. I just kind of, you know, spoke from the heart. Hopefully this turned out well. Uh, but until next time, subscribe and peace out.